So I just want to clarify something uh, in case it, for some reason there's a uh, uh, lack of clarity on it. Uh, when you ask me questions uh, after I explain what the metan says, I will answer you most of the time on uh, the different opinions that exist in the madhahib. So I'll give you the easiest or, this, or the, uh, the simplest of ways or the way that uh, it has the most ease in it. Laysar. I won't answer you based on fiqh shafi'i all the time because that may be a bit cl closing the matter a bit. So don't uh, 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 confuse my answers uh, as be, or, or, or think with that what I'm telling you is what the Shafi'iyya say. I, uh, what the Shafi'iyya say is what we're reading in the book. Uh, so the example being when we talked about Masah al um, um, wiping over leather socks, uh, the Shafi'iyya do not uh, see permissible to do Masah uh, wiping on the socks that we're wearing right now. Uh, they, they don't see that, and the Jumhur don't either. It's only the Hanabila who accept that specific uh, action. But when you ask me, I'll of course answer you based on what I see to be the Aisir or the most, uh, the easiest of, of, of fatawa, the ones that will that helps you get through your life um, uh, with, with the most ease. But uh, what, what's in the what's in the metin is fiqh shafi. I just want to make sure that that's clear. So just to kind of recap from what we talked about last time, when we said about masah al khufain, which wiping over the uh, uh, leather socks, or jawrabain, as the hanabila see it, which is well, you know thick socks that are that don't have any holes in them. Um, that for the muqim it's it's 24 hours, and for someone who's doing safar, it is three days, right? So if you are doing safar. Uh, so you started, you made wudu, full wudu, and then you put on your uh, your socks, or you put on your leather socks if you're Shafi'i. Uh, then you get three days in a row, right, to wipe on those socks. Now let's say that you uh, are no longer traveling. In the middle of the middle of it, like a day and a half in, you end up arriving uh, home because you're not, you're not traveling anymore. Khalas, you, you can't do that anymore. You've already done a day, and you're not traveling anymore, so you have to take them off. And you have to make full wudu. Uh, the same thing would happen if you were, uh, if, if you started wiping over your socks, uh, not traveling, you're still, you're still where you are, you're still in your location, and you started, and you start traveling, you don't start counting three days from then. No, you have to make a full wudu, and then put, so for you to do three days in a row, you have to make the full wudu during travel, and then wear the socks during travel, and then stay traveling for the three whole days in order for you to be able to do three days. Any change of those conditions will only give you the 24 hours. So if you end up arriving before the day, or, you know, you're not traveling anymore, you arrive before the three days are done, or you, you make the, uh, the full wudu and put the socks on uh, before you start traveling, then you only get 24 hours each time. Is that, is that clear? So you own, the only condition that allows you to do three days in a row for the Shafi'iyya is that if you make the full wudu, and put on the socks during travel and then stay traveling for three days or more, right? And then you can do, then you can do wiping over the slippers or the leather socks or the socks for, for three whole days, right? Now, um, another, another question that came up was what happens if we take off uh, our slippers? Now, when I answered that, I was answering it based on uh, what I see to be the easiest of, uh, of fatawa. But we're going to continue reading now in the, in the matin and then we'll talk about the Shafi'iyya, how the Shafi'iyya see the specific uh, action because the Shafi'i don't, don't, don't accept that. So we're going to start, so we're going to continue, inshallah. Just, uh, just make sure that when you ask me a question, you understand that I'm answering you not based on fiqh Shafi'i only, right? What I explained to you from the text itself is fiqh Shafi'i. I may elaborate sometimes if there's different opinions and I may not. But if you ask me a question, I probably will ask you based on what all the madhahib say, just because I want you to benefit from the, the answer. So you're not taking something that is restricted or limited to one school of thought, rather you're benefiting from the ease that is provided by understanding the different schools of thought. All right, so where we are now, what, what page would we leave? 23. Uh, masho. Okay, so do you guys know where we are? Uh, does everyone know which uh, part we are? It begins with وَيَبُطُلُ الْمَسْحُ So that's where we, we, we start, stopped off. وَيَبُطُلُ الْمَسْحُ بِثَلَاثَةِ أَشْيَاءِ And the act of wiping over the, uh, the, 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 the leather socks for the Shafi'iyya is invalidated or is no longer permissible if three things happen. So three things, if they happen, then you are no longer able to continue to wipe over your, sa your, your leather socks or, or slippers or, uh, or, or just regular socks if you accept the Hanbali uh, understanding of the issue. With three things. The first one, بِخَلْعِهِمَا If you take them off. So for the Shafi'iyya, if you take them off, then you cannot put them back on again and continue to do mas'h. Right? You have to make a full wudu again if you take them off. And I'll talk about that in a second because there's different opinions regarding that and that's what I answered last time when you asked me. وَالْقِضَاءِ الْمُدَّةِ and for the time to expire, meaning you, you go through the 24 hours if you are muqim, if you're staying where you are, and the three days ending if you are musafir, if you are traveling, right? 
وما يوجب الغسل and anything that will cause you to have to have a ghusl. So if you're like, well, what causes you to have to have a ghusl? You go back a few pages. So if you go back a few pages, and I like I like the fact that uh, he does this because it makes you kind of you know to revise things. So go back and you'll find wafara. Sorry, and you'll find wama yujib al ghusl are a number of things, right? If you go back a couple of sitta to ashia, there's six things that will cause you to need to have a ghusl. Uh, three for men and women alike, and one uh, and three for uh, for women uh, on their own, right? All right. So, what are the three things that will cause you to need ghusl for both men and women? This seems to have uh, okay. It's good enough. What are the three things? Intercourse. Yeah. So, first one is intercourse, and then. The third one's. Added. So yeah. So if if you pass away, then you need to, someone has to do ghusl for you, and then, and then uh, orgasms or ejaculations, right? That that will that will cause you to need uh, to have to have to have ghusl. All right. Good. So if any of these things happen, then you can no longer. Continue to do masah al khufain. You can't continue to uh, wipe over your uh, or, or your slippers. Uh, the other two things is if you take them off for the shafi'i, the moment you take them off, you have to make wudu all over again. Uh, do you lose your fatahara if you take them off? Do you lose your tahara? No. So for the shafi'i, you don't lose your tahara. For other schools of thought, they, they say that some of them say that you lose uh, you lose your tahara, meaning that you you're no longer tahar. That means you have to make meaning you cannot pray. So some schools of thought say if you take off the, uh, if, you, if you had made wudu by wiping, then you take them off, right? Now you've lost your wudu, you have to make wudu again. And that's a certain, yeah, any of the certain schools of thought see that. Which I fear you don't, which makes it easier. So if you take it off, you still have your wudu. And that is, in my uh, opinion, the, the asah. So it's a bit, it's, it's, it's yeah. associated with wudu? Yes, so pure. What is associated with ghusl then? So it's also tahara, but it's, it's called raf uh, al-janaba. Uh, Raf al Janaba is the removal of the uh, the major uh, uh, religious impurity. So Janaba is major religious imp impurities, and then Hadath is minor religious impurities. So Hadath like uh, gas or going to the bathroom, right? And then the three things that uh, we talked about, like as as an intercourse, is major religious impurity. So to remove the ma minor religious impurity, wudu is enough. To remove the major, you need ghusl. Right, so uh, taking off the socks uh, for the Shafi'iyyah and for most of them, uh, it doesn't uh, cause you to lose your wudu, but some of them see that uh, that way. Now, um, there is an opinion that I that I tend to um, to accept in this issue. Yes. No, so I don't have any more English versions of that. I didn't have any to begin with. I just had maybe two or three that I gave out, and I, they weren't mine. But uh, Imam may have some. If he has some, we'll ask him to you know to pass them out. But, you, but again, you need to either use the uh, the iTunes version of Musa Ferber's uh, translation, or actually find the book itself. And uh, 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 so. You can buy it online. Yeah, so you can buy it online. It's not too expensive. I think it's ten, fifteen, twenty dollars top. So I think it's a good idea if you want to, uh, if you're finding it difficult to keep up with the translation that I'm doing, and you want to actually see the words in front of you, then that's a good idea. But if you keep up word for word, you, sh you should be able to translate, inshallah, what I'm saying, because I translate it word for word. It's not, it's not a very complex method. It's pretty simple. The words are pretty simple. All right. So wh the 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 opinion I wanted to explain to you was that if you take off your socks, so let's say you start at, uh, let's say you make your wudu at 11 p a.m. That's when you made your wudu and you put your socks on, right? You put your slippers on. So now you have 24 hours. So you have up until 11 a.m. the next day, right? To do mas'ah. So you'll be able to pray dhuhr, asr, maghrib, isha, and fajr, right? If you're losing wudu every time. Now if you, at Fajr, you make wudu for Fajr, right, before 11, and then you, by, by wiping out over your slippers, or over your socks, and you pray, and then you stay awake until 2 o'clock, p.m. day, so you wake up in the morning, you, make, you pray Fajr, and then you don't go to sleep, and you never do anything to lose your wudu, so you don't leak any gas, or you don't go to the bathroom, right? Can you pray Dhuhr without making a new wudu? Yes, you can make wudu, pray Dhuhr without making a new wudu, because you still have wudu. Right? What you can do is you cannot make another wudu by wiping over them. You have to, if you want to make a wudu again after 11 a.m., if you have the intention of making a wudu again after 11 a.m., you have to take, up, take them off. Does that make sense? But in this period, if you make wudu from 11 a.m. the first day, which is when you put on your, uh, your, your socks, to 11 a.m. the next day, then you, you, you can just wipe. But after 11 a.m. the next day, khalas, you, have to take, you have to take them off. Now, the question is, what happens if the mid, in the middle of this time, so let's say you make wudu for asr, you pray asr, and then here you take them off. You have wudu, if you had wudu, 
because you, you wiped over your slippers. You prayed Asr and then you didn't lose your wudu, but you took off your socks, right? For the Shafi'iyah, now you cannot uh, wipe over them again. You have, to, you have to make a full wudu again, right? And that is the prominent position for most, uh, for most uh, scholars. However, there is, a, there is an opinion that I tend to see a bit, uh, give, give it a bit more light as far as I'm concerned, is that you can, if you put them on, you still have your wudu, or you put on new ones, right, and you still have your wudu, then you're allowed to continue wiping till the end of the time. Right, till the end of this time. So it doesn't start a new one. If you, wake, if you take them off and then put them on again, so you take off and then you put on again. So is this the beginning of a new 24? No, this is a part of the old 24. And I, I tend to see that opinion to be a bit more uh, rational. Uh, because let's say you took off your socks, you didn't lose your wudu at this point, you still have your wudu, right, and you wore them again, you wore them with tahara. Right? But uh, is this a new time? Is it a new cycle of 24 hours? No, it's still stuck with the early, earlier cycle. Now the Shafi'i don't accept that, as we just read in the Metin. Whenever you take them off, then you cannot do mas'ha again. You have to make a full wudu all over again. Does that make sense? Because I felt like that question came a lot last time and I felt like there was some lack of clarity at the end of it for everyone. So that's, I just wanted to make sure that was clear. Okay. Faslun, now a new chapter. And there are five conditions for doing tayammum. Now you know what tayammum is, generally speaking? Yeah, so tayammum means when you, are going, when you want to make wudu, but there's no water anywhere. Or you cannot use water. So the conditions uh, to do something called tayammum, called dry ablution. So it's, it's dry ablution, it's, and we're going to use uh, uh, sand, uh, dust or sand or, or soil for it. Uh, I guess maybe those words, I guess dust is the best word for it. So there's five conditions for the Shafi'iyah in order for you to be able to uh, perform tayammum. So the first one, wujudul udri bi safarin aw marad. There has to be an excuse for you not to use water. So either you're on the road, you're traveling. You're like, well, what does traveling have to do? Well, if you're traveling, of course these are back in the day, back in. And this is all the water you've got. And either you're going to drink it or make wudu with it. Then what are you going to do? Obviously, you're going to drink it. You don't make wudu with it. Right? You, you, you do dry ablution because you, if this is all you've got. Now, if you have a lot of water and you're like, no, no, I'm good. I have enough water for wudu. I have enough water to drink. I'm not, in, I, I'm good. And uh, there's a lot of uh, check, uh, checkpoints along the way. We're totally fine. Then you, 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 don't, you don't do tamum. Like uh, today, uh, if, you, if you have like a wa bottle water, uh, water bottle in your car, you can't say, well, I, I need to drink it because there's like a million checkpoints on the road. You can get down. There's a lot of water. Alhamdulillah. There's no more. I don't think there's a place on earth that has more water than Canada. So you're fine as far as finding water. But... Alhamdulillah, you, using, uh, 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 living in, um, uh, in the Middle East or in the, the Arab, uh, you know, Arabian Sahara, uh, it's a different story. So if this is all you've got, then you're not going to use wudu for it. So suffer if you have an excuse of being on, on the road traveling, oh, marad, or you're sick. Let's say that if you put water on yourself, uh, you die. Then what do you do? Yeah, and you, you, cannot do you cannot make wudu. So if water is going to touch you, it's going to cause you to... Um, well, let's say that you have an injury, an open injury, an open wound. Right? Let's say you have an open wound somewhere in your body, or you can't. Uh, so if if that's the case, then you you, you don't have to do uh, you don't have to do wudu. Or let's say you have a skin disease, or yeah, any there's or, or, or the, there's the, any any uh, health uh, circumstance that will cause uh, you to be in harm's way by putting water on you. That makes sense. So if at any point water touching your body is going to cause you to be harmed, then you're allowed to make uh, the dry ablution. All right. So those that's the first that's the first condition. Right. Not simple lethargy or. No, no, no. It has to be like a harm's way. You're going to be ill if water touches you because you have like an open wound or you have uh, yeah, any, some skin disease or something like that. Now, it's not very uh, common, but it may be. Like someone could be, if you're in the hospital and you just uh, suffered an accident and there's a lot of open wounds, to make wudu is going to actually cause them to get very infected and you're going to die, then you can do tayammum. That's not a problem, inshallah. So there has to be that excuse of either being sick or being on the road traveling with no water. Yes. No, we'll, we'll come to that in a second. We'll come to that in a second. Is, um, is the other option that you would make a wudu and then you could put a bandage over it and then you would just wipe like wet hands over? Sure. If if that is uh, not going to cause any harm, if there's no. If the possibility of harm there is is minimal, meaning if it's not, if not, if water coming on the body or if the or if the majority of the uh, of your arm or of your head, like a, a basic, a, a major part of wudu is you can, water can't come close to it, then you can just do uh, dry ablution. But if this is, it's a small cut, and then you can just cover it up if it's you know. Minor, do you have to have the wudu before you put the bandage on? So w w what we're going to do is we're going to that, that will fall under al-jabair. 
which is casts. So, so when we come to casts, we'll talk about if you, if you have a band-aid, because it'll be the same analogy, inshallah, uh, for both. But generally speaking, you have to have an excuse. Either you are ill or you are traveling and there's not enough water for you, then you can do dry ablution. And the, the, the second condition, وَدُخُولُ وَقْتِ الصلاة, And the time of prayer has to enter. What does that mean? So let's say uh, it's 11 a.m., right? What, what do you pray at 11 a.m. today? Nothing, there's nothing to pray, right? Can you make dry ablution at 11 a.m.? No, because there's no prayer to pray. You're like, but I want to have wudu. No, no, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no. You just wait until it's duhr time. Hopefully by then, uh, either you, you're not, you find water, if you, if you can't find water. And if not, then you make dry ablution. Dry ablution is not something you can do uh, in, in advance. You do it as a necessity. You do it when the time is needed. So time for prayer, you look for water, you can't find any water, all right? Then you make uh, tayammum. But you don't do it in, in advance, like an hour in advance. And then what happens if, uh, because if, if you make it in advance and then dhuhr adhan comes, but there's water, do you have wudu? No, you have, to, you have to use the water so it doesn't work anymore. No, yes? What about 11 a.m. you want to talk to the no, so why you don't don't do that? So just wait for Fajr, inshallah, and, and don't do that. No, you can just wait. It's qada, so qada doesn't doesn't uh, doesn't count here. So uh, we're not talking about qada. Qada you can do uh, any other time. So uh, you can do it at dhuhr time, which is usually better. All right. Wa dukhul waqt al which is the enter of time, prayer time. Wa talab al ma'i wa ta'azur istimalihi wa i'wazuhu baad al talab. So and for you to look for water, meaning that means you have to actually look for water. You can't, I mean, you have to try and seek out a water source. You have to find, so if you don't have any water and you're on the, on the road and it's time for prayer, you seek a water source. If you don't find a water source, then that's, that's the third condition you've just uh, fulfilled. I mean, you have to look for water. You can't just say, well, there's no water, yeah, so I'm just going to pile on the ground and then move on. No, if, if you know that there's another couple of kilometers, there's going to be a place where you can, uh, you, you can find water. So you have to actually seek it out because it's the, the asl, the origin, the, uh, the base, the, the foundation, the principle is that you're going to use water for wudu and you have to kind of exhaust the, the, all the resources available before you move on or the, the fact that you cannot use it I mean the water that exists you cannot use for whatever reason whether because it's uh, harmful whether because it's not uh, it, it's, uh, it's contaminated for example or because you don't have enough of it or if you find water you find only small amounts of water so these small amounts you're going to need for something else or these small amounts aren't enough uh, to make wudu. So, i'wazuhu ba'al talab. So, these are the five conditions that you need in order for you to, uh, to, to make uh, tayammum. So, you have to be either ill or on the road. I mean, there has to be an excuse. You need, you need to have some. Re the time of prayer has to enter. It has to be time of prayer. You have to search for what, seek it out. You have to. It has to be water, if you find it, it has to be impossible for you to use, whether because it's contaminated or you're ill, or there's not, or it's, there's not enough of it, or there's a very small amounts of water. You find a very small amount of water, which is not enough for you to make wudu, it's barely enough for you to, to drink. So if these conditions are fulfilled, then you can use uh, do tayammum to make it very simple. Either you cannot use water, right, for any reason, or there is no water. Right? Either you cannot use it, either be, for whatever reason, whether you're sick or you're traveling, there's not enough of it, it's contaminated, yeah, and you look for it, you can't find it, regardless. Or there's no water at all. Right? So one of those two things, and the time of prayer, which is very important to me, you, know, you understand that, it has to be the time of salah. So uh, you only make tayammum when you're going to pray immediately. You can't make tayammum and then say, okay, I'll pray in an hour, because then now you may find water and then you have to do it again. Right? So th if it's time for salah, it's uh, 1.28, Luhr time, you look around, you look for water, you can't find water, or you cannot use water because you're ill. Yes? Say for example, you do tayammum on Luhr. Yeah. And then before Asr comes, you find water, do you repeat tayammum? No, so you don't repeat. You're not, you're not required to repeat uh, salawat when you, when you do tayammum. Right? But that means uh, for Asr, you're going to have full wudu. Right? But you don't have to repeat anything. Alright. Uh, and pure uh, dust or turab uh, is that what they is that the translation for turab in the book is it dust or is it uh, sand what is it uh, existence of pure earth containing so earth oh so this is earth okay that's fine so basically it, 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 you're looking for something that has uh, a dusty uh, nature or characteristic to it so we're talking about earth so you go uh, if you're walking in a park uh, and there's no grass and it's not damp so the earth itself, it, it, there's dust. So if you hit on the earth, then some, some level of dust will come up. And that's what, what, what the tayammum is, is looking at, basically. But turab al-tahir, and pure earth, or pure dust, lahu ghubar has a certain level of dust. Certain, certain amount of dust will come out of it. فَإِنْ خَالَطَهُ جِصٌ أَوْ رَمْلٌ لَمْ يُجْزِئْ أَوْ لَمْ يُجْزِئْ So 
but if that, let's say that the earth or the, 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 the sand or the, the, the dirt uh, or the dust is not pure, meaning there is uh, white sand in it, or there is, uh, uh, what's, what's uh, just, um, uh, no, what do they build with? They use... Uh, Water? Chips? Yeah, what is it called in English? Or just like unnatural or manufactured materials, right? So for yeah. example, like bricks. Like we couldn't do Taimum on bricks if they were lying on the ground. Yeah, so yeah, if you've seen when they're building houses, they have white type of sand, so you can't use that. And shul uh, baton, what's what's? Yeah, cement. Yeah, so so uh, <laughs> subhanallah. Un <laughs> so dust, uh, cement that is not, of course, it's not, it's not a mold yet. So it's just the the dust of cement. You can't use that either. So anything that is manufactured or anything that is not pure turab, you can't use for for wudu. You have to for And if the sand itself, or the earth itself, or the dust itself, or the the the, 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 the dirt itself is mixed with that you can't use it. you need to look for turab tahir you have to look for uh, clean or pure earth and then we'll talk about in a second what, what you need to do right and of course there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of details on these issues in the madhahib uh, I'm not going to go into a lot of it because it takes a lot of time but you understand the idea and inshallah yani you won't be caught up in a place where there's nothing but uh, <laughs> yani, uh, to, uh, there's no water or if there's no water there's no actual turab I mean it would be very hard if you come to a place where there's no water and there's no sand like there's no uh, uh, pure dirt. That would be. The, I don't know where you would where, where you would be to be honest. If, if that's your if that's your situation, I'm pretty sure you should, you have bigger things to worry about at that point. Yeah. Uh, for the first one, uh, is it only for safar and marad? No. So that, that that is like examples, like be safar and omar. Then, but you, there are different examples that exist regarding uh, yani, uh, what you could uh, end up. Uh, you know. Uh, uh, needing, yeah. Just wondering, because in the Shafi Madhab, they usually emphasize that you actually have to touch the physical earth. So, is there an issue with taking the dirt, putting it in a bowl, and putting it in your house? Is that an issue in the Shafi Madhab? To put it in your bowl in your house? Why? For example, let's say somebody is like um, chronically ill and they're going to be making time. Sure, sure. Yeah, no, it's fine. Yeah, no, it's fine. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. If you, if you read the Mughni, that's specified as, as something okay. Even though if, uh, if there's no reason for it, then you stahab in the home, meaning it's, it's, it's uh, recommended that you hit the ground, the actual earth, earth itself. But uh, you, you can move it from one place to the other, as long as it's tahir. As long as it's not being mixed with anything, with anything else. It still has to be dirt. Like yeah, it still has to be dirt. Yeah, and it can't be mixed with anything. It has to be, it has to be pure. All right. Uh, and what is obligatory when it comes to making uh, tayammum are four things. We have four things. What's number one, as, as always? And niyyah, right? It's always going to be intention. If you don't know what you're doing, then you're not doing it. Right? You have to know what you're doing in order for it to count. So an niyyah is number one. Number two, وَمَسْحُ الْوَجْهِ Wiping the face. وَالْيَدَيْنِ مَعَ الْمِرْفَقَيْنِ And the, ha the arms or the hands up to the, uh, to the elbows. Right? وَالتَّرْتِيب And doing that in that order. And doing it uh, in the order. The ayah, of course, the dalil of this is Qawluhu uh, Ta'ala Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala Surat Al-Ma'idah, ayah number 6. فَتَيَمَّمُوا صَعِيدًا طَيِّبًا right? فَامْسَحُوا بِوُجُوهِكُمْ وَأَيْدِيكُمْ مِنْهُ Right? And, then and wipe with your, your face and then your arms with it. So what the Shafi'iyah do is they find a, uh, a piece, what we're supposed to do, look for a little part of, uh, of earth where there's, uh, where there's uh, dirt or sand or dust. And what you do is you, you hit down with your hand twice or three times, right? And then you wipe your face, and then you hit again, and you wipe your arm from, from elbow down and from elbow down. Now which one you start with, it doesn't matter. Some of them say you start with, you, you start with your right hand doing on your left. Some of them say you start with your left doing your right. The arjah is you start with the left and you do your right. So you hit three times, you wipe your face, you hit again, that's how you do it, when there's, when there's uh, turab, when you find turab. This is, this is of course in the case, the very rare case for us Canadians, where you have no water anywhere, all right? And you cannot have water touching you for any reason. Uh, and then that's what you do, is take a moment. Like I said, if you're chronically ill, then, and, and there's actually uh, harm for you, like a burn in the burn unit. I remember in the burn unit, uh, this was a big deal. Be, uh, the, we had to actually go a couple of times and talk about it, yeah. For wiping the arms, does that include both sides of the arm or just one side? So both sides of the arm. Yeah, so you go, go, go on both sides of the arm. Allah Allah. No, the hands no. So your day is always from here from to here. This is always this is Sunnah and Wudu and Sunnah and, and Timo as well. Going to the washroom, is your private parts exempt from that? Yeah, so this is this is in the case that you don't ha you you just went to the washroom yeah, yeah. and um, you, you couldn't find water after that yeah. to make wudu. So, so they're exempt from that. Yeah, so you just do just down your face, your arms, and then you ha you can pray. 
Right? You can only do that when the prayer enters and you couldn't find water. Or you found water but it wasn't enough. Or you found water that was contaminated and you couldn't use. Or you're ill and you can't use it. Or you only have enough for your, your travel. Right? Now, the moment uh, and you find water for the prayer after that, then you will going to make that for the prayer after that. Yeah, you will, yes? Yes? Like sure. No, no, no. It's, just, it, it's it, it lacks specificity when it comes to uh, when it comes to table. So you just you, no, you're just wiping. You're wiping. That's all it is. So it's not rusted. We're not washing anything. You're not you know picking up sand and, and you, no, no. It's just it's just it's just the dust and it's a wipe, right? That's all it is. Yeah. So you're wiping, wiping. That's it. There's not, nothing else. You start with the face, you're gonna go to the arms. Right? Uh, for the Shafi'iyah, Tartib is Fard. So if you mess up, the, just like Wudu, if you mess up the Tartib for Shafi'iyah, it doesn't count. Yeah. I would have thought that you have to include the back of the hands because you haven't done the hands yet. Like, so, so it's Qiyas ala al-Wudu, right? Yeah. So is Wudu, are the hands obligatory in Wudu? No. no. For the Shafi'iyah, it's not, right? It's Sunnah. So it's Qiyas ala al-Wudu, al 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 so the hands are Sunnah for both. So it's the Yadain. In the Marfaqeen, fi khilaf, there is a difference of opinion yeah. regarding that. Even in the Madhab itself, even in the Shafi'i Madhab itself, whether we have to, whether the hands have to be included or not. So you can include them just for the uh, safe, safe, to be safe, but uh, the, the Rajah is that you don't have to. All right, so those are the four fara'il, those are the four obligatory actions of wudu, of tayammum, sorry, again, of dry ablution. So you have to have the intention, it's wiping the face, it's wiping the arms to the elbows, and then you keep, do it in that sequence for the shafi'iyyah. Now, sunanuhu uh, thalathatu ashya, and there's three sunan for uh, tayammum, for the shafi'iyyah. The first one, tasmiyah, the same thing, almost exactly as wudu, so you say bismillah rahman rahim at the beginning. وَتَقْدِيمُ الْيُمْنَ عَلَى الْيُسْرَى And then doing the right before the left, that's, uh, yani that, that's the sunnah. وَالْمُوَالَى and then doing it in uh, uh, c consecutively, so not keeping, not putting a uh, large uh, uh, an amount of time or a period of time between one thing. So you don't check and then you. So the sunnah, but of course, if you, if you do, it still counts for the shafi'iyah, just like the wudu counted. Now muala is more of a big deal for the Malikiyah and for them tayammum la yujza. It doesn't work unless you unless you do muala, meaning you do it consecutively. Right? For the shafi'iyah, it's a sunnah. So altogether, you want to think about seven things for tayammum. You want to think of niya, of tasmiyah saying bismillah, of wiping your face, uh, of wiping uh, the arms, of doing uh, uh, right before left, uh, doing it in that sequence and doing it consecutively. Four of them are fard, three of them are sunnah. Right? The four things that we talked about at the beginning is what is fard. Do it consecutively, uh, do it, sorry, in the sequence, meaning face before arms, and make sure you have knee at the beginning. And make sure, of course, the condition is that you have to have no water or it harms you, and you have to find turab that is tahir. Turab has to be uh, has to be pure. It cannot be it cannot be mixed with anything else, with sand or any manufactured dusts of any kind. All right. Any questions on that? That's pretty. It's, it's pretty simple. Yeah. Sorry. Well, if you don't, if you have no other choice, then as long as it's earth, you're good. But uh, the uh, you're supposed to look for dusty earth. But let's say that you're, it's been raining for the last uh, you know five days straight. Or of course, if it's raining, then you can make wudu. So that makes no sense. So that, that I lost that right away. <laughs> so that was ruined right then and there, right? But <laughs> Yeah, so, but, but again, like, you know, that would kind of kill the whole point. If it's not dusty, that means it's been raining. If it's been raining, then you should find water somewhere to make wudu. So, so I think that kind of kills it. But yeah, uh, any, any, uh, any uh, yeah, pure soil should work, even if it lacks, a, it doesn't have much dust in it. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Well, that's, that's pure earth, right? Sand, I mean, as manufactured white sand. Like, you ever seen the sand they build buildings with? That's what we're talking about. Not the actual, like, beach sand is fine. Like, if you're, of course, again, you're at the beach, so it doesn't work either. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I seem to be completely messing this up as I go along. <laughs> My examples aren't. Uh <laughs> How about when you're, like, at a playground? <laughs> Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, I mean, again, these, these examples don't work because there's always water around, right? So, uh, yeah. No cloth, nothing. It's permissible. You can do a cloth or anything like that. So, uh, the Shafi'i have difference of opinion on that. Uh, other madhab are okay with anything that brings dust. So, if you're sitting on a couch, and the couch has dust, uh, yeah, I mean, some, some, some of the madhab accept that. And there are, uh, can, uh, there are certain opinions within the Shafi'i madhab that accept that as well. Uh, specifically, since there's, uh, you know, there's dust in it, but that that is a bit of a it's, it's a long it's a long argument. Like there's a lot of debate regarding it. I don't want to get into too much of it. So uh, the hadith, there are a number of hadith of the prophet uh, that describe how the prophet ﷺ did it, but the Quran itself uh, worded it word for word. So فتيمموا يا صعيدا طيبا فمسحوا بوجوهكم وأيديكم منه. So the Quran was very very clear on it, and he was observed صلى الله عليه وسلم doing it a number of times. 
uh, and and uh, it's one of the uh, so it's it's, it, it's a uh, a certain it's one of the certain rukhs or the certain way uh, because because it's, it's a Quranic one so the Quran the evidence is the Quran itself. That's what you call. Yep. Yeah. So what the ashya and what causes tayammum to be invalid three things. Number one, ma abtala al wudu whatever causes you to lose your wudu. So what causes you to lose your wudu? It's important that go back for a moment and find out and remind yourself what is it that causes you to, to lose your wudu. There are six things that cause you to lose your wudu. May Allah say, you guys are all eating tamr. Uh, what are the things that cause you to, to lose wudu? Because what causes you to lose tayammum are three things. The first thing is everything that causes you to lose wudu. What causes you to lose wudu? Of course, uh, if anything comes out of the uh, out of the two exits, anything coming out at all, right? Yeah, so sleeping If you're not sleeping in the proper upright way With your back uh, supported and your bottom part supported Then that will cause you to lose your wudu Loss of conscious, loss of mind, loss of sanity For any reason uh, Touching For the Shafi'iyah, touching a non-mahram uh, woman Masfaraj uh, al with, al-kaf With the inside of your hand touching your private parts Whether front or from behind, or the actual. And then of course we talked about details of how different madhahab see that a bit differently. But that's what the Shafi'iyah uh, see. So any of these things happening will cause you to lose your tayammum, meaning you lose the religious purity that you have that was brought to you by tayammum. Uh, there's, other, there's two more things for, that will cause you to lose your wudu for tayammum, or lose your tahara for tayammum. Uh, the other one, وَرُؤْيَةُ الْمَاءِ فِي غَيْرِ وَقْتِ الصَّلَةِ And then seeing water outside of your prayer. Outside of prayer time. So, and this is an important mas'ala. So if you're standing up in prayer, you did takbir and you're praying, you're re and you just, you just made tayammum a second ago. So you made tayammum because you looked for water, there was no water, uh, and you're, making, you're, you're praying right now. So as you're praying, and of course this is for someone who can use water. The, those who cannot use water, this doesn't apply to. But if you can, but you just can't find it. So you're praying, and then when you're praying, you actually see water somewhere, or water becomes available, or it starts to rain. Right, as you're, as you're praying your salah. So, do you have to end your prayer? For the Shafi'iyah, you don't. For others, you do. Like, it's a matter of, remember we talked about that in the istashab, right? So, you istashabu al-aslu, for the Shafi'iyah and the Hanafiyah. So, you can continue. The aslu is that you had wudu, you continue until the end of what you're doing. So, if you see water outside of the time of prayer for the Shafi'iyah, you have to make wudu immediately. Even if it's not a time of prayer. Even if there's not a time of prayer, you have to make wudu. So let's say you, you, you uh, made tayammum, you pray dhuhr, you're on your way, you see water, you make wudu. Why? Because you've just lost your, your tayammum. Right? Even if it's not a prayer time, you've just lost your tayammum. So you should make wudu in order for, for, your, for your tahara to be acceptable. Right? So the moment you see water outside of a prayer time, do you have uh, pu purity still? If you made tayammum? No, you've lost your purity. It's, it's like you just uh, leaked gas from wudu. So the moment, so you made tayammum, you have uh, relig religious purity, you have tahara. You pray, you see water, you lost the religious purity, you have to go make wudu. But if you see it during prayer time, yeah, during prayer time, then you can continue. You can continue your prayer till the end of it. Right? Other madhab say that you actually have to end your prayer, go make wudu, and then pray again. That's the majority. No, it's kind of half-half, actually. So Hanafi and Shafi'i say, like, you don't have to finish, and then Halabi and Maliki say you have to repeat it again. So it's just a matter of difference of opinion. But uh, either way, uh, the Shafi'i and the Hanafi are okay with you continuing your prayer till the end of it. And then, of course, after prayer, right, you see water, right, because water is still there. And then what happens? You don't have purity anymore. So you have to make wudu. But you could, you're allowed to continue your prayer, which is the point that we're saying. With وَرُؤْيَةُ الْمَاءِ فِي غَيْرِ وَقْتِ الصَّلَةِ So uh, uh, apostasy, basically leaving Islam. So leaving Islam causes you to lose your religious purity, but that's a very, of course, general one because it kind of makes you lose everything, really, if you think about <laughs> yeah. it. So, yeah, so. If that were the case, why isn't that part of wudu? They don't see it as causing you to lose wudu. You don't need wudu anymore. Yeah, but, but so the example they give here, and this is a very, very specific, this is very specific stuff that uh, I don't want to waste your time with too much, that if you were to make riddah with wudu and then regret that five minutes in or ten or an hour in before you actually do anything, come back, you still have your wudu. Right? So that's, that's, that's the mas'ala that they see here. But for the tayammum, the moment you make it, the moment you, you, know, you leave the Islam house, you've lost your wudu. So if you come back again, you say, well, I had tayammum before. No, no, <laughs> sorry, my brother, Yani, you have to do it again. But it is, it is, they are, these are specific examples and stuff, but that's, this, is what the, yeah, this is what they see. This is how they view it. So for tayammum, or, um, if you do lose it after finding the water, 
and then you, you don't find that like it's gone somehow. So, uh, so uh, let, okay, let me give you an example. So I made tayammum because I didn't find water. I prayed Luhur. During Luhur prayer, I saw water. I continue my prayer. But the moment I finish my prayer, I'm no long, I no longer have my purity. So I go and make wudu. And I say to myself, I'll make wudu with this water so that I can pray also later on. I go on the road, right? I, couldn't, I, don't, I didn't have a container to take the water with me, so I, you know, I'm just going to hope that I find uh, enough later. Uh, I lose my wudu on the way. You know, I leak gas as I'm going. Also, prayer is now in. I look for water. I can't find it. So I make the tayammum again, right? But the moment you see water, if you had make, you lose your tayammum, you, you lose the re religious purity that you had that came from tayammum. You, you lose it immediately. So you have to make wudu. That make, does that answer your question? Yeah, but what okay. if you didn't make the water, uh, the wudu in the water? For example, there's water, but then there's the jasna in it. Okay, that's a different thing. Okay. Khalas, that's the adhur isti'mal al So that's the condition of not being able to use water for it to be contaminated, for example. Right? So if water is con if you're standing in front of a you know a bin of water that is najis, then you, you make tayammum. You're not gonna you know you know it doesn't make some sense, right? So that's ta'adru isti'malihi, meaning you cannot you cannot use it because of kinds of contamination or anything else that causes it not to be usable. Yeah. Why is it uh, apostasy a validator for I, I, again, well, it's, it's, too, it's too long of an argument. Well, I say, let's just leave it, leave it as is. Uh, <laughs> that's like a tertiary book uh, of fiqh study. That's very, it's, it goes into a lot of detail, of, you know, a lot of philosophy of Islamic, a lot of Islamic philosophy. And it's really not, I mean, how many times are you going to end up, uh, uh, we don't have these problems. you know, how many times are you going to run through this problem where someone leaves Islam and then enters like an hour later and he's asking you, and his question is, do I still have wudu because he doesn't want to make it? Come on, yes, this is like, no, no, just leave, leave this alone. But anyways, uh, th these are things that you learn when you kind of go into more de depth the fiqh to understand the philosophy behind thought, right? But so, but it's going to take too, too long. So, we, so we could just keep on going. So, the person, yes. So for example, uh, asal comes. Yeah. But you don't find water. Yeah. But you know that before Maghrib comes, you're going to be at a place where there is water. Yeah, you can continue. You can continue, or you can make the woman pray. Okay. So it's up to you because the fa you you don't really know if you're going to find water. You assume. Well, what if you actually know? How do you know? Do you know ghaib? You don't know. Do you know you're going to live that long? Like it's a, oh. like say for example, you're outside the city. Yeah. Right? But you know it's going to take you an hour to get to the city. Yeah. So do you think to him on there and then just pray? And then if you decide to pray right then and there, then yeah. If that's your decision. Like if you want to pray at awal waqt. But uh, you don't have to, right? You can pray. Uh, as long as you, 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 can, you, can, you can push prayer until the end of its waqt. The Hanafiya only see yani, prayer being wajib at the end of the waqt anyway. So that, that, that doesn't have a it's, it's a long difference of opinion. So if you decide to pray, because it's, it's the dakhal al-waqt, it's the time of prayer, and you want to pray right now, right, and there's no water, then you can do tayammum. Now, the fact that you think or you know or you have a reason to believe there's going to be water later, there's a difference of opinion whether you should con go, continue with that, and then pray at the end, I mean at the end of the time, so if it's maghrib, let's say it's asr time, so you pray just before Maghrib, when, you, when you've exhausted every resource for looking for water. But if you have no reason to believe there's going to be water at all, so you can pray at the beginning. So this is, it, it's pretty, pretty much up to you. But uh, again, tayammum, how many times have, how many, how many people here have actually done tayammum before? Where, where have you done tayammum? I was, I guess I was at a park and I was actually the bath of the boss and I had no other choice for that. Also time, it was like an end, like an actual mm. time, I was with the kids. Yeah. Not my kids, my siblings. Yeah. Uh, oh, obviously. Yeah. And I had like, the doors, you know how the bathrooms yeah. are, are locked? Yeah, yeah. I could not open it at all. Sure. So I'm like, all right, what do I do? Good. Good, good. good. No, it was, there's this, like, I, if I showed where it is, where we used to live, it's like, yeah. So yeah, it's, it's not it's not as yeah it's not as easy, but yeah, your your question is valid, and, and that's what you do. I, you you could you could decide to pray right now, look for it, not find it. But again, if you know water is going to be there somewhere down the road, then th that means you still that's that's looking for it basically, right? Looking for water, seeking out water. And that's a part. Of, that's one of the conditions. So if you know, okay, if it's just a couple of kilometers this way, there's water, then you continue to sight it. But if you don't have any reason to believe there's water coming up, right? Then and, and the, the waqt may go out. Then you should uh, you should you should do to a moment pray. All right. وَصَاحِبُ الْجَبَائِرِ يَمْسَحُ عَلَيْهِ And the person who has casts, so let's say you break your arm or... Actually, and you, sorry, I want to... Sure. But the men's was locked, I made the ammo, and then I prayed, and then I'm like, well, let me see the woman's, and the woman's was open. And then I made wudu after. <laughs> But I didn't check the woman's because I'm like, yo. I just want to clarify that out. <laughs> Even if it was open, would you have gone If it was open? You would have gone uh, Yeah, because it, 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 it's like, it's like, it's like, what else? I was like, yo, I have to make people do. Like, now I'm like, is that No, I, I agree. I, I second the brother's concern here, Yanni. I wouldn't, I wouldn't go in, Yanni. No, I said hello, anybody there? <laughs> So that you know, you're, are you less a weirdo going in if you said hello at the beginning? It's not going to make a difference, Yanni. Yeah. If you get caught, you're going to be in trouble. So no, maybe. 
<laughs> oh my god. Let's yeah, so this is fiqh, right? Going into all the <laughs> what if and what if, right? <laughs> all right. So if you have a cast, if you've broken your arm, or broken any body part or your leg, right? So it, you need to make wudu. And the example here, we're going to use arm because that's the most common. So what do you do? فَيَمْسَحُ صَاحِبُ الْجَبَائِرِ عَلَيْهَا Then you, you wipe over the jabira. And you can either wipe over the whole thing or you can wipe over the well, one part of it if it's difficult for you to move it around. So let's say that your arm has to stay like this. You can't really, so it's hard for you to wipe. So you can just wipe on top. Uh, the, the rajih or the most, uh, yeah, the, 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 the prominent opinion is that you wipe all over uh, the casts uh, when, when, when you're wiping. Um, uh, so if if we're uh, if you have a cast, then uh, when you when you make tayammum, you can just wipe over it, and the same thing goes for uh, for wudu as well. So when we talk about uh, wudu, it's the same it's the same it's the same condition here, it's the same uh, situation. So if you have a cast on your arm. When you make wudu, you can wipe over it. And when you make tayammum, the same thing, you just wipe, you can just uh, wipe over it. And then you pray. Now the Shafi'iyah have a condition. And he doesn't have to repeat this prayer if he had worn the cast with tahara. Meaning if he had made wudu before. So it's like the example of putting on the leather slippers or le leather socks. Uh, you, can, you can wipe over them if you've made, if you had wudu before you put them on, correct? Right, so the Shafi'iyah draw an analogy. They say when it comes to casts, you can wipe over the cast if you also wore, uh, the, put the cast on when you had wudu. Right? And if you didn't, then you will make tayammum or make wudu, wipe over it, pray, and then when you take it off, you have to repeat your prayers. That's what the Shafi'iyah. That is very, very difficult. Uh, the other madhahib have, diff have different uh, yani opinions on this matter, which I find to be much more... Uh, all the prayers you missed. Yeah, so, so the Shafi'iyah, if you had wear, worn it without wudu, then, the, then you should repeat it. And that's one of the, uh, that's one of the aqwal for the Shafi'iyah, meaning not, meaning not all the Shafi'iyah say that. Uh, this is what the Imam uh, Abu Shuja' al-Asfahani put in his book, and at the time that was a prominent position. Uh, and Imam al-Nawi has a different opinion on that later on, and, the, and there's different opinions within the madhab itself, meaning you don't have to, even if you don't have tuhur, because most of the time you don't. Most of the time, you you know you hit, you break your arm, you're in panic, you're in you're in pain. You, you don't you don't know if you had will do or not, and you probably didn't. So when you put it on, you really can't do much about it. So and, and the the, the jumhur don't don't require you to have will do before you put your cast on in order for you to uh, to wipe over it and not need to repeat it. So the shafi'i say you can you can pray, you can do wiping whether it's will do or tayammum and pray, but. When you take it off, you have to repeat these prayers and do proper wudu because you didn't wear it uh, properly to begin with. But that's only the Shafi'i, you'll see it that way. Yeah. I'm just going back, I was going to ask, uh, let's say you uh, put the water over your sock, but then you take your socks off, do you still have your wudu or no? So Shafi'i, yeah, if you remember, uh, Shafi'i say the moment you take it off, you still have your wudu, but you can't, uh, you can't, you, you can't wipe on them again. All right, so yeah, so you can't wipe on them. If you put them back on, you can't wipe them, but you still have your wudu. All right. It's only certain scholars who, or, or, or uh, the, the minority of madhahib actually see if you not, uh, for you to lose your wudu, and, and, and the ra'i is, is, is marjuh, is, is not prominent. So, yes. so, so the majority believe that you have to have your original, you have to still have your original wudu without breaking it to keep putting the socks back on if you want to keep putting them on. And then you said that there's another opinion. I was just curious, is it from one of the madhahib specifically? Or just one no. Particular? No, so it's more mutaakhirin. It's more like late scholars, like uh, uh, within within the last fifty years or so. So it's not a part of a madhab. There's a lot of opinions that uh, kind of uh, surface in the last maybe 40, 50 years from the scholars of the different madhab, but they're not actually a part of the madhab itself. They haven't became they haven't become a part of the madhab. They probably will, and in another ten, maybe ten years, when 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 these scholars' uh, books are written, and, and then this will be incorporated into the madhab. But uh, I will tell you again when I when I give you opinions like this is just to give you the easiest of opinions that have evidence and that have some merit to them to make it easier inshallah but uh, the madad themselves don't uh, they don't see permissible for you to take them off put them back on again with wudu and then keep on doing masah i just gave you this example i just gave you this as as a as an alternative or something that scholars have spoken of that has some merit to it because um, you're just you're just within the original 20 24 hours to begin with yeah, Does that make sense it, it definitely yeah. makes sense because you still have the tahara, you still have tahara yeah. there's yeah. nothing explicit to prove that yeah. you have to have the original wudu. exactly yeah. It makes a lot of sense. Yeah, so this is why this is why I think it's, it has merit this this argument anyway. All right, so um, uh, that that's regarding masih al jabair, and the same thing would go for band aids. So when we talk about casts. We're saying the same thing about band aids. So if you have a band aid or if you have a uh, a patch on, on, then you can do masih on it as long as it doesn't harm it, right? If it harms it, uh, then you can either make wudu around it 
or you can do tayammum, and there's a difference of opinions among scholars regarding that. Meaning, if, you, if there's a part of your arm that is, has, has a, uh, you know, a patch on it, and if water coming near it may be very harmful to it and cause it to be affected, then either you can make wudu around it, right? some scholars say, or you can actually do tayammum. So you're allowed to do tayammum in, 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 uh, in specific situations like that. So casts or patches or band-aids, specifically when water is going to be harmful uh, uh, to your body. Okay. وَيَتَيَمَّمُ لِكُلِّ فَرِيضَةٍ you have to make tayammum for every faridah. So, and so you made tayammum for dhuhr. Dhuhr time entered, you make tayammum, you prayed. You continued on your road, and dhuhr asr time came, and you still haven't found water. Can you pray right away? No, you have to make tayammum again. So tayammum is like a, a, uh, a temporary fix. No, oh, it only, oh, that was your point. Oh, sorry. No, no. No, I'm sorry. That, 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 it only works for one prayer. It works for one prayer at a time. That's all it works for. So it doesn't, you can't have it, you can't make tayammum in fajr and then pray, f the, you know, five, six prayers with that one tayammum. No, every time you're going to pray a, 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 a faridah, a faridah, meaning one of the five prayers, you have to make a, a new tayammum. وَيُصَلِّي بِتَيَمُّمٍ وَاحِدٍ مَا شَاءَ مِنَ النَّوَافِلِ But as far as nawafil go, you can pray as many nawafil as you want with one tayammum. Right? So let's say you pray dhuhr, you make tayammum, you pray dhuhr. And uh, now you want to pray sunnah to dhuhr. Do you have to make tayammum again? No. You can pray as many as you want with uh, nawafil, uh, sunnah, with the same tayammum. But when asr time comes, you have to make another, uh, you have to make another, another uh, tayammum. Now here's a question. So let's say, because you're, you're traveling, right? You're going to do jam' al qasr. So you want to pray dhuhr and asr. Do you have to make a tayammum for dhuhr and tayammum for asr? So no, you don't. You, you make tayammum one for both prayers at the same time, right? When Here's you know, when you're traveling. So you're driving, you're doing jam' and qasr, you put dhuhr and asr at the same time. So do you make tayammum for dhuhr and tayammum for asr? No, you can do them both at the same time. That's, a, that's, a, that, that's an acceptable uh, opinion in Shafi'i. And there is an opinion in the Shafi'i method that says, no, you have to make tayammum twice. Tayammum for dhuhr, because it, this is what they say. They say, you pray, you're going to pray them two rak'ah each at the same time, right, right after each other. So you make tayammum, you pray dhuhr, now you're supposed to look for water again. You're supposed to try it one more time before you do asr. That's what some of them say. So you look again for water and then take tayammum and pray. But uh, the, the, in the Shafi'i, except especially when you're doing uh, safar, to pray the, the prayers that are, that are uh, allocated in the same slot together, like dhuhr and asr or maghrib and isha, to do it with one tayammum. Yes, who had a question? Yeah. Did you get my, did I answer your question? Okay, all right. Yes. Is yes, only for prayer purpose? Yes, only for prayer purpose. Yeah, nothing else. Yes. Um, what if like someone dies and you don't have any water to um, listen? Well, that's a different story, of course. If, uh, if you don't have any water, then khalas. Uh, and you just, yeah, and you, you clean them up the best you can and you bury them. Well, that's sad, of course. Yeah, you need to make ghusl. Well, if you can't make ghusl, if there's no water, how do you do ghusl for them? Well, exactly. That's what I mean. How do you make ghusl? Like, you need to make ghusl, for example, right? How do you make ghusl like, if there's no water around? So you do tayammum. Tayammum works for both. Oh, really? Yeah, well, you know, you have no choice. Like, you, what, what are you supposed to do? I mean, are you, you're not going to have a, you know, you're not going to have a ghusl with, with dust or anything. You just, you just do tayammum, right? Just, just stick to tayammum. <laughs> I don't want to see someone standing there, you know, <laughs> pouring <laughs> dust over his head. <laughs> no, no. So this is regardless whether you don't have wudu or you don't have ghusl. Now, the thing is, when you see water, if you don't have ghusl, now you're not going to do wudu. You're going to do ghusl. Right? Let's say you need to have ghusl. But there's no water at all. So you make tayammum and you pray, right? And then what do you do if you see water? You make ghusl. Now, do you repeat the prayers that you prayed? No. Yeah, the Shafi'i say you do. Yeah, the Shafi'i say you do, all right? So if you, you, if, if you uh, had janabah, right? And you didn't find water to make ghusl and you're going to do tayammum, then you do tayammum, you pray. And then when you find water, you do ghusl. And then you repeat what you lost. And other madhab have different opinions on that. What's the point to pray first time? Because it's time for prayer. So... Yeah, but there's a difference between you not praying at all, I mean the timing being dhuhr right now, and you just sit around with no prayer, and you pray with, a, with something that is invalidating it, but you, because you have no choice right now but to do it, you do it, and then you do qada later on to, to repeat it properly. So there is stuff like that in, 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 in ibadat, like in, in acts of worship and rituals, there are stuff like that, where sometimes you have to do it, but with the understanding that you may have to do this again, or you're going to do it again. And that's the... Of yeah, this is how the Shafi'i. But, you, but there, are, there, are, there are other opinions that don't require you to do, to do it again. Now, the, uh, uh, the, the, those who don't require you to do it again, they have a condition that is, uh, when, you, when you lost your, 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 uh, your religious, uh, yani, when you had Janaba, you didn't have water at the time, right? If you didn't and you just chose not to have Ghusl and now you're on the road and you're going to make Tayammu, no, then you have to do it again. So let's say, yani, you woke up in the morning and you had Janaba. Or you, you prayed Fajr, you went to sleep, you woke up at 11 o'clock, you, you, you had Janaba, right? And there was water in the house, but you didn't do Ghusl. You go on the road, Dhuhr time comes in, and there's no water anyway, anywhere. What do you do? 
you don't tell your mom, but now you have to repeat because you could have done, you could have fixed this. Like this is your, this is your mess. You made this mess. You have to you know, you pay for it. So those who, those who do accept you not repeating uh, uh, after ghusl are those who say that you could, you had no choice. Meaning you lost, you were on the road, and you lost your, and you had, you woke up with janaba, and there was no water. Then those, those are the ones who accept it, but they still see that the, you know, the prominence is still you repeat it. So with yeah. that case, would you, if you're with your wife, would you, or are you like encouraged not to? have intercourse with your wife if there's no water then? Around there. <sighs> to say encouraged or discouraged is a bit, uh, yeah, any, uh, it's a bit, a, a bit of a stretch. Yeah, so, so probably if you know that you're not going to be able to do ghusl, then it's wise that you don't do that. But is there ithim if you do? No, there's not going to be ithim. Yeah, so ithim, ithim doesn't exist. None, none, none of this has ithim in it. Like none, uh, doing tayammum, even though you need ghusl, there's no ithim, there's no, uh, you're not going to be punished for any of it. But uh, it's smart, I guess, from, <laughs> from a, I guess from a, you know, a point of view of just knowing what you're doing, that, that you shouldn't maybe, if you, if you know that there's no water available for, for ghusl. But you're not ithim, like you're not going to be uh, punished. The only time you're going to be punished for, or you're gonna be, there's, there's ithim or sin for intercourse is when it's done either during siyam or during ihram or something like that. But besides that, you're not at ithim. That makes sense. Like there's difference to say because when we say the word sinful, yeah, we're saying that you're going to say yad for this. That's a big. That's a big deal. Uh, no, no one. Yeah, it's, uh, it takes a lot of guts for you to say something is ithim, ithim if, if there's not enough evidence to support it. But it is definitely not smart. Like we can say that, but ithim, I, I don't believe there's going to be uh, ithim for it. Wallahu ta'ala All right. So yes. There's only a few scholars that actually allow it, even if the prayer time has already expired completely. They would still say you have to make it up. Because like, I'm saying, I'm thinking that. Oh, you make it up maybe even days later. Oh, it does not be right away. Oh no, even days later. Let's, let's say I, I today all day no water. I had janaba and I'm doing tayammum. I prayed five prayers. The next day I get home, I find water. I I make ghusl and then I have to repeat the five prayers that I did during that time. I mean that's, that's a prominent for the shafi'i. But there are those who say that's that you don't have to repeat it. Do it that way? Well, there's there, there's really no example of him sallallahu alaihi wasallam that happening to him. Yeah. Like that didn't happen to him sallallahu alaihi wasallam specifically. So all of this is based on on analogies that are drawn from different uh, examples. Yeah. So do you repeat your prayers once you find water, or just once you have time? So then you, that becomes we have to. We'll talk about that when we talk about qada. So when we come to prayers and we talk about the concept of repeating a prayer qada or doing it outside of its uh, or i'ada sorry it's not qada qada is when you didn't do it at all when we talk about i'ada so when we we're going to come to talk about when we talk about salah rituals we'll talk about three things we'll talk about ada doing it on time properly qada when you don't do it on time at all you don't do it so you lose you miss the time and then i'ada meaning you did it but now you have to do it again right so there are certain uh, rules and conditions that apply to them we'll talk about it when, when we when we come to that so we're talking here we're talking about not qada sorry we're talking about i'ada so that you've already prayed it then you have to do it one more time so you have to repeat it again, yes? All right, so we continue, inshallah. Faslun, on the chapter after that. وَكُلُّ مَا إِعِنْ خَرَجَ مِنَ السَّبِيلَيْنِ نَجِسْ إِلَّا الْمَنِي Everything that comes out of the exits of the human being's body is najis, is, is impure. Except many, except uh, sperm. It's not seen as, as uh, najis. Now, when it comes out, you need to have ghusl after it, correct? Wudu is not going to cut it, you have to have ghusl. And for the, most, most of the shafi'i, you have to have ghusl and wudu. For most of the shafi'i, some of them are okay with just one of them. But the actual substance itself is not najis. So urine, however, and feces are, they are najis. So if they touch, uh, if they're on your clothing, then you have to, uh, you have to uh, actually clean your clothing with water and get them completely out or change your clothing. You don't lose your wudu, but you have to, you have to if, if, if you have feces or urine on it. But if you have uh, sperm on your clothing for, for whatever reason, and uh, we do have an example of that where, the, where Aisha said, uh, that she would just, um, just, just scratch it off. Yeah, and just get it. So it's not najis. I mean, if it was najis, we would have to use water. You have to bring like a bucket of water and actually clean it off, clean out the mani. So sperm is not najis uh, in, in, in its nature. It is, however, you should re re remove it, uh, just like you remove any other substance from your body when you, make, uh, when you want to pray, but it is not seen as najis. All right. And that is from, uh, by the way, that's from, from all uh, animals as well. Meaning all animals have the same ruling regarding this. For the Shafi'i, except everything, for the Shafi'i, every time you say animals, you say for all animals except the dog and the pig. So Shafi'i say dog and pig immediately. And so do uh, Hanabila. Hanafiya have uh, less uh, uh, difficult rules against dogs, and, and Malikiya don't say dogs at all. 
So Malikiyah for them is just the pig, it's not the dog. So they don't see any any, any najasa with the dog. And Hanafiyah have less re different regulations. Shafi'i and Hanabila will say animals and then accept and you'll see this as we go throughout the, the metin, it's always going to be the exception of the, uh, the, the boar and, and the dog or the canine. All right. وَغَسْلُ جَمِيعِ الْأَبْوَالِ وَالْأَرْوَاثِ وَاجِبَ And washing with water, uh, urine and feces from clothing or places of prayer or, or places of worship or even from households or any place that you exist in is wajib, it's obligatory. It's, it's wajib upon us if you're living in a house and there is uh, yeah, any, uh, urine anywhere or feces anywhere that you wash it out with water. You, it's not just the removal of it. You have to actually bring water and soap and wash it out. Water is enough for, yeah, from an Islamic perspective, uh, even if you don't have soap, even though we, we use it because it's, it brings more cleanliness into the, uh, into the, into the equation. But for, Islam, for Islamic purposes or Islamic religious purposes, water is enough. But you have to wash it out with water whether it's on your clothing, whether it's on the carpet, or whether it's any part of your house. You're supposed to wash it out because you're not allowed to leave najasa anywhere. It's wajib to wash with water anything in your vicinity that has uh, najasa, impurities on it, as the example here, abwal, which is uh, urine, and arwath, which is uh, feces. It's wajib, it's obligatory everywhere and they, they, give, they give evidence of that the Prophet ﷺ, when the uh, the Arabi came and he and he urinated in the masjid that he told them to, to pour water on it until until it was cleaned away so that's that's the example but of course it's much bigger than that uh, impurities are, are supposed to be purified and for, regardless of, wh of where they are except uh, the urine of a infant boy who has not yet eaten food meaning he's still just breastfeeding Right? Because there's evidence uh, يعني, in the Imam Bukhari Muslim that the Prophet ﷺ was carrying once say, an infant, maybe two, a two month old boy, and he you know, urinated and it came a bit of a, on, his, uh, on his clothing. So he just said, uh, Then the purification, purification can happen with just maybe uh, sprinkling some water on it. So he just kind of, with a bit of water on his hand, just kind of uh, uh, you know, hit, uh, put, pushed it away or, or dusted it off or brushed it off. He didn't actually take take water and pour it on the part that the najasa came on it and, 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 and uh, uh, cleaned it. Now, when I say boy, because the madahib do see, uh, because the only the evidence that we have is about a boy, they don't have it about uh, a girl. So they didn't, they didn't make the analogy. Now, why they, don't, they didn't make an analogy, I am not sure. It's a, it's a matter of, uh, of difference of opinion of the schol within scholars. Uh, they, they, it's not clear as why when they, when they talk about the female, that no, the, the, it, you should wash it off. Uh, there is a hadith that exists that uh, refers to that. Hadith is hasan, meaning its authenticity is kind of 50-50. You know, that the Prophet ﷺ said, the bowl is sabi, the, uh, the, the uh, urine of a boy who has not yet uh, eaten food, then uh, meaning just brush it off with some water. And as for the, for, for the infant girl, then wash it off with water. And we don't really know exactly why. And we don't have much evidence to support either way. Uh, some madahib, uh, like Hanafi and Malikiyah, for them, uh, regard, it's, it, it's, it's still urine. They don't see the difference between whether the, it's a boy or a girl, or whether he has eaten food or not eaten food. It all needs to be washed off with water. And the Shafi'i and the Hanabila have the exception for an infant boy who has not yet eaten food and is still being breastfed, that you can just brush it off with some water. And this is a simple, yeah, the difference is pretty simple. Uh, to be on the safe side, whenever urine comes on clothing, just wash it off with water, and that way you're in child, you're, right? you're safe, yes. Sorry, kind of related, I don't know if I got covered in a part of the Yeah, you so you lose your wudu. So yeah. 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 For the Shafi'i, yeah, of course. Yeah. Uh, my wife asked me the same question. That she, what about the washing the baby? And if the pee while she's praying and we're washing them, would it affect the wudu? Sure, uh, sure. So when it comes to uh, infants that have not yet eaten food, then yeah, uh, you don't lose your wudu yet. But if they Yeah, so if they're older then, yeah, so if they're older then, then she has to repeat her wudu. If it touch. If they pee and... No, so when you, when you have pee on you, yeah. you don't lose wudu. Yeah. You just have to wash it off. But if you touch a private part of... Um, yeah, then, then that's that, that is the reason for wudu for the Shafi'iyya. Right? For children, there's a different, the madhahib have different opinions on this, especially the Malikiyya, when it comes to uh, touching children's private parts from mothers. So there, are, there is a permissibility for them not to need to read, read their wudu, rather just wash off their hands. And for yeah. us, after 
taking bath, it will be dry up the whole body, including the private parts. Then so this is a different thing. So 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 this is this is where the Shafi'i uh, uh, rulings regarding touching your private parts with your hands will cause you to lose wudu. So when you dry up, you shouldn't be for the Shafi'i. You shouldn't be touching it with your hands. You should be using the, the uh, towels or, or or paper towels. But the Hanafi'i don't have a problem either way. That's why if you take by the Hanafi, then you don't. It's, it's not a problem when you're touching yours or you're touching your kids. You're good. Your wudu is still is still there. But if if there's bowl, then you need to. Or if there's urine, you have to you have to wash it off. Yeah. The same thing. You just wash it off. So you just wash it off. Again, uh, this, you know, you memorize what causes you to lose wudu. So you don't keep on asking the same question, right? Memorize. These are the things that cause you to lose wudu. Nothing else causes you to lose wudu. There's only three things that need, makes you need, or two things that make you need to have ghusl. Nothing else. Everything else is just the substance that is on you. You need to wash off. That's all you need to do. Just make sure you can make that, uh, yani the, the, the. All right, so we'll just read one more question before we sign up. What are your عن شيء من النجاسات إلا اليسير من الدم والقيح تمام وما لا نفس له سائلة إذا وقع في الإناء وما تفيه فإنه لا ينجسه. So what does this mean? So when it comes and we'll talk about this in detail inshallah next time. When it comes to uh, are there any amounts of najasa that are small enough for us to say يعفى يعفى means that it's forgiven. You don't have to get rid of it. You don't have to wash it off. ولا يعفى says and no amount of najasa is forgiven. إلا اليسير من الدم والقيح except a small amount of blood and pus this is for the Shafi'iya وما لا نفس له سائلة and maybe the death of a of an insect لا نفس له سائلة is talking about insects or uh, creatures that don't have blood running blood in them uh, so like flies and uh, crickets and uh, cockroaches and stuff and stuff like that إذا وقع في الإناء وما تفيه فإنه لا ينجسه let's say that a, 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 a bug died and fell into a cup of water right it's in the water now it's dead now a dead creature is najis right but because this is a, a, a an insect it's not najis and for it to fall in the water it doesn't cause the water to become najis so you can take out the cockroach or the of course it's disgusting for you to, but you can drink like this not this water is still not najis you can do wudu with it if this is the water you're going to use for your wudu that makes sense because the actual uh, insect is not najis when it dies because it doesn't have any blood in it it doesn't have running blood or, or the amount of blood that it's in it is very small it is small enough to say that even if, if that amount of blood was on your uh, your clothing, you are fine, and who mean it would be forgiven. So let's say you're praying, and we'll talk about that next time, inshallah, a bit more detail because there's a lot of different opinions and it's important for you to know. If you are praying, and after you finish your prayer, you look and you find that there's a dot of blood on your on your clothing, right? So for it, uh, if it's smaller than dirham baghli, which is basically, or, or dinar, as the Hanafiya said, so if it's smaller than this, this amount, then you're good. Then you can, your prayer was valid. If it's bigger, then you need you need to repeat it inshallah you have to repeat it again right and this is dam and qayh what about bowl and, and buraz what about uh, uh, يعني, urine and, and, and feces well this is where the, there's a lot of difference of opinion and even within the uh, madhhab al-shafi'i itself there's a difference of opinion so imam we had a couple of opinions and others had different opinions regarding uh, whether if it's small amounts of, uh, of, uh, of urine or feces will this be uh, uh, forgiven and you can continue your prayer why is this important well many people uh, go to the bathroom and then maybe a drop of urine may may continue correct like this is a problem that is, is of kind of widespread so let's say a drop of, of urine uh, is there like is there in the uh, so if it's small enough and how big it is and, and, and whether it can be seen or it can be smelled or it can be so there's a lot of different uh, issues so inshallah next time when we start that, that'll be what I'll explain to you and you'll have clarity on that so in, in case this is a problem that you face often then you know exactly what to do inshallah inshallah tomorrow before maghrib uh, so 7.15 inshallah the halaqa for Arabic inshallah